as if steel includes the design of steel and composite beams. But how do you actually enter the information in the program? How do you check the results? How do you optimize the design? How do you print out the results? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to review the graphical user interface in ASIP Steel, so that we get familiar with the program and how it works. When you open ASIP Steel, you see the project manager. Here you can see the modules included in the package. It includes the base plate and the anchorage design, steel columns, steel and composite beams, shear connections, and moment connections. Today we're going to focus on the steel and composite beam design. When you click on the button, you create a calculation, assign a name, any name, add, and the calculation has been added to the tree. To open the calculation that we just created, just double click on the node. And this is a template for steel and composite beam design in ASDIP Steel 5. In the left pane, we enter the information. In the right pane, we see the results. In the steel beam tab, we can specify the steel section that we want to use. We click on the AISC section button. This is the AISC database. We can just select one of the sections. And when we click on the select, that section will be transferred to the module. For example, we specify W24 by 55, select it, and that section has been transferred. And the properties of the section will be used in the, in the design. Here we can enter the number of supports. Can be up to six supports, so five spans, continuous spans, and two cantilevers and cantilevers. Here in this table, we enter the span length. In this case, we are modeling a continuous beam of three spans. The first span 20 feet, 20 feet, and 16 feet. By default, all the interior supports are pinned, but the end supports can be pinned or can be fixed. So you can model different type of beams. In the lateral bracing, if we click on the button, we can specify here the lateral bracing. We have several options. The first option is top continuously braced. The second is top braced at a certain spacing. The third option is beam is completely unbraced. And the fourth option is when you specify a custom location of the lateral bracing in a top flange and bottom flange per, per span. For example, if in this case we specify the beam is completely unbraced, we can go to the graph tab. At the top, we, we can see the beam elevation with all the loads applied in every span. And the shear and moment diagram. And the diagrams can be sorted by load combination. For example, if we select another combination, it will be different here. It changes dynamically. If we go to the slab deck tab, here we enter the uh, slab thickness and the beam spacing. All this information is used to calculate the cell weight of the system. When the beam is composite, we just check on this box. If it's just a simple steel beam, non-composite, we uncheck the box. If the beam is composite, the beam can be temporarily short. In that case, the composite section will resist the construction loads and the final loads as well. Here in this section, we can specify the metal deck, if any. If we don't have any metal deck, we just select none, and we don't have any metal deck. Or we can just specify the metal deck that we want, just select the manufacturer and the type. The metal deck can be transverse or longitudinal with respect to the beam, so perpendicular or parallel to the beam. For composite beams, here at the bottom we specify the shear studs, the sizes, and the properties. By default, the program calculates the minimum partial composite to resist the applied loads. You can change this behavior if you specify the partial composite uh, percentage. Includes it could be 100% composite or any other uh, percentage. We go to the loads tab. Here we can specify the loads applied to the beam per span. As it still allows to define final loads and construction loads. As the name suggests, construction loads are the loads applied before the concrete has achieved the 75% of F'C. For both final and construction loads, which you can specify uniform loads, variable loads, concentrated loads, and moments along the spans. To define the span that we want to apply the loads on, 
here at the segment, there's a list where we can select the span. For example, we select span number one. All these loads will, will be applied in span number one. You can specify either a single set of pre-combined loads. That's, these are the loads that were combined previously somewhere else in another software. Or you can specify a full set of load cases and the program will combine them internally. If we go to the load combination button, here we can see the load combinations using ASDIP Steel 5 complies with as 705 or as 710 or 16. We, you can also specify user defined where you can specify your own load factors. If we go to the right tab at the Garag Glance tab, here you can see a summary of the results. Here you can identify very quickly if something is failing. In this case, everything is passing. We, we go to the Condense tab. Here you can see a detailed set of results grouped by topic and by load combination that you can check immediately in more detail if something is failing. If you need more detail, go to the Detail tab, scroll down, and you can see a full set of calculations step by step with uh, exposed formulas and the references to the AISC code also organized by topic. This is the flexure design for non-composite beams, the flexure design for composite beams, scroll down, the deflections, and finally if you go to the graph tab you can see here the shear and moment diagrams that we discussed previously. If you go to the design and then design manager here you can specify a range of beam depth and uh, find the section that comply with the design criteria. For example, if we specify sections between, uh, say, 18 inches deep and 22 inches deep, and then we click on the find sections, these are the winners. These are the sections that comply with the design criteria and also the sections that are between the 18 and 22 inches deep. Here you, you can sort by weight. In other words, you can find the lightest section, which is this one, 21 by 48. And you can also sort by ratio. So this is the highest ratio in, uh, in the beam. For example, if we select this beam 18 by 55, which is a ratio 0.76, and click Select, this section will be using the program with all the properties to complete the design. Here we can see that the section W18 by 55 was selected and that complies with the design criteria. We go to the other glance tab and we can see that everything is passing. And this is the controlling design ratio 0.76 that we selected in the design manager as well. If we go to the print preview, we can select the condens report and the program generates this pre-formatted condens report. The page one, the page two, page three. We can see all together there three pages. We go back. We can select the print preview for the detailed report four pages with all the calculations. You can print out all these reports as well. In summary, in this module you enter the information for the geometry of the beam in the steel beam tab. In the slab and uh, deck tab, you specify the concrete beam, if any, and the metal deck. And also you can specify here if the beam is composite or not. In the loads tab, here you enter the information regarding your loads in your model, final loads and construction loads. The design can be per ASD or LRFD. As you can see, it's very easy to design steel and composite beams in ASDIP Steel. The purpose of this video is to get familiar with the graphical user interface. I'll prepare some other videos with examples where we can see how to input the information, how to optimize the design, and how to check the results. With this, we conclude the presentation of the graphical user interface of ASIP Steel 5, the steel and composite beam design module. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future regarding videos like this one. Thank you for your attention.